Celebrity MasterChef, we've got ourselves 20 celebrities who want to show us how good they are in the kitchen. I'm just as apprehensive as I was right back at the start. Many of them can sing, dance, act. We don't care about that. What we care about is whether they can cook. One thing going wrong, and then that will be you out. So you've got to really, I think, concentrate on every single thing. Who's not going to just be a flash in a pan? Light the oven, set the stove, sharpen your knives, let's go. The MasterChef heats have pitted five celebrities against each other. Facts. The cod looks banging. Last time, despite all her efforts... Woohoo! Hey, top chef today! The only way was out for TV personality Amy Childs. Now the remaining four are back to fight for a place in the semi-finals. I don't quite know what to expect, but makes you feel young again, doesn't it? Surprises. <laughs> you don't get many at my age. I like to be the best that I can be in whatever I do, and if that means better than everybody else, then that's even better, I guess. They know I can cook, but I want people to look at my plate of food and go, oh, yeah. I tend to get a bit panicky in the kitchen normally, but I have not yet, and I'm not saying I won't, because I imagine I will. Oh, my gosh. Well done, you four. You've made it through. Now it gets a little bit tougher. This is a MasterChef invention relay test. You've already put yourself in teams by the colour of the apron you chose. Blue team, red team. Each team will be asked to cook a main course and a dessert. Could you please decide who's going to go first? Are you sure? I'll do mine. I'll go, I'll try. I'll try. I'll go first. Red team, who's going first? I think I'm going first. Just one last thing. At changeover, there will be no talking at all. You'll be able to leave clues for each other on your bench, but no written nor spoken word. So thank you very much. You guys can leave. Thank you. Oh my God. I don't think I even understood what he was on about. So. <laughs> Never mind, completely. My face. So, 25 minutes to make a dessert. <laughs> I feel sick. Okay, time to reveal your ingredients. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sid and Louise must create a main course using rabbit. Oh, wow. And a dessert using at least one stone fruit, including nectarines, cherries and plums. Ladies and gentlemen, 25 minutes. Let's cook. They can also choose from a larder of ingredients, including potatoes, parsnips, carrots, mushrooms, mascarpone cheese and a wide range of herbs and spices. I love this, it makes me smile because it brings out extremes in our contestants. I wonder how these guys are going to react today. Will they conquer or will they just get into a big fluster? We've got to chop up the rabbit. Oh my gosh. It's delicious rabbit, but I've only ever cooked it when it didn't look like a rabbit. Have you taken legs off a chicken before? Um, not very successfully, but I think you're just going to go for it. So what have you got in mind, mate? A rabbit stew. I've got so much lovely veg over there, so one pot, one dust, sling it all in. And dessert? I want to get this on the go before I think about a dessert. Now, I don't really have a sweet tooth. I have no idea what I'm going to find in there, but I, I can make something work. Have you got a dish in mind then, Louise? I'm going to do a rabbit stew, because I think that's going to be quite delicious. 
and then I'm going to have like um, new potatoes on the side with vegetables. So I think in a bowl. And don't forget to leave her clues, Anna. Clues. I'm going to get the stew on so that when she comes, she doesn't have to deal too much with it. Right. And then I'm thinking pudding, maybe a crumble or something. I could do a crumble quite quickly, so I'll see how far I get with this. Both Sid and Louise are making a rabbit stew. It's almost as if there's a mirror down the middle of the kitchen. She's just copying me. What? <laughs> I wouldn't copy you if I was paid. I need to get a stew on, because otherwise she's not going to be very happy, I don't think. She won't know what to do. I hope she does start the main and the dessert. And knowing Louise, I think she probably will. <sighs> right, I'm going to do some dessert now. I'm quite lucky that I got Louise in that way and not Sid. Because Sid's told us a couple of times he's not great at dessert, so... I chose well. What do you think about Sid and dessert? I'm thinking of a lot, maybe a little tart. You better start something, mate, otherwise you've got nothing I've, to do. I'm definitely going to start something, I'm right. You got nine minutes to your changeover. So what's your thought process on the dessert? We're gonna try and leave her a clue. I'd like to make a little tart. Do you think if I lay it out for her, she might understand? She might yeah, do, will Probably need something else to, that she knows it's gonna be a tart, won't she? Maybe I'll put the ingredients by it. <laughs> I'm leaving out the, uh, the peaches, the pastry, and some cream. So hopefully she'll uh, make a nice peach tart. My nightmare situation would be to walk in there and, and Sid had done something really, really fancy and end up completely ruining it for him. <laughs> I just hope that I don't go in and turn a moussaka into, you know, a spag vol. A panna cotta becomes a Victoria sponge. But I think more or less I'm going to gather what she's doing, well, hopefully. Do you know what? Without being unfair or rude to you, but I do feel we've left the two best people. Oh yeah, in for there. sure. It's not that I wouldn't have trusted you. No, and not that I wouldn't have trusted. Well, I wouldn't actually. I'm only messing. <laughs> right, that's it. Swap over. One in, one out. Main's done. Do the top. Okay, 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 okay. Good luck. Thank you. Just uh, keep an eye on that. Whoa, Sid! Back it in. Off you go. Turn it down a bit. Ooh, hello. Copying me again. No, no, you obviously copying uh, me. Uh, you I, copied me. No, you, you, no, no. Yeah, and, you, <laughs> and you sneakily took all the carrots. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> what do you see? I see a hot potty kind of chicken. I think it's chicken. And mushroom and le a leek pie. And then I think he's going for some kind of tart. I'm going to put plum in it. And what about the pot? Are you going to do anything with that? I am going to stir, sit, check, season, and hope. Sid's not going to be overly impressed with the speed of my cutting, I don't think. She's pretty much done the hard work, hasn't she? You can't really go wrong, can you, with pieces of chicken and some veg? So we need to hope that they can keep the pots going. I hope my rabbit stew tastes better than yours. Got no chance. <laughs> Tina, you seem to come in and have a bit of a spring in your step. What have you gathered from what's been left behind for you? She's doing kind of veg and a chicken and mushroom kind of thing going on and some kind of a tartlet, I guess, um, with the stone fruits. Louise is quite level-headed and she's got it all going on, I think. You're so. quite level-headed though, aren't you, really? I don't know. Maybe this is just old age. <laughs> uh, well, you keep on saying you're old. We're oh, the I... same age. <laughs> Tina's walked in, was calm as you like, looked around the bench, worked out exactly what Louise has left for her, and got on with her. And I'm really impressed. So what are you going to do? I'm going to put the pastry in the bottom, then fill it with fruit, then put the bit on the top. Pastry at the bottom, fruit in the middle, more pastry on the top. Yeah. You've never made a tart before, have you? No. Instead, actually, scrap this. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to roll it back out, and then I'm going to make it like a, an actual parcel. Right. OK. It's going to kill me. 
What's in there? Fun. Water. Just water. At the moment, I'm going to find some caster sugar, hopefully. Oh, I found some caster sugar. Perfect. What does concern me is that Liz has got slices of stone fruit in a pot of boiling water. She's going to lose all the natural juice from the fruit. I don't know whether that dessert's going to work. I don't know whether the pastry's going to cook. And if it does, what on earth is going to be inside it? Decide not to do the tart, then? Yeah. I was just a bit funny about the measurements and stuff, so... The sponge... Ah? Uh -huh. ..gonna cut in half, put the... Oh, I see. You're making a sponge and then you're gonna cut it in half and put the cream and the fruit in the middle of it. Like a cake? Yeah. Ah! Very good. I'm just waiting on my sponge. Come on, come on. So let's just have that cooks in time, eh? You've got two minutes before your teammate joins you. You feel quite relaxed, don't you? Yeah, really relaxed. Just want to check something. How far further forward are you from when you first came in? The fruit's cooked. That's about it, really. I kind of knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do it. And now it's all gone horribly wrong. I'm up the creek. Hopefully, we're not going to have much to do. We've just got to dress it up and make it look pretty. Mm, sure, I'm sure that's exactly Yeah, well, I'm only speaking for myself. <laughs> Keep calm. You stop copying me. It's not a competition. Stop copying me. I know what to do. Where's there any flour? I'm going to eat pancakes. That'll be all right with fruit, won't it? Please, let me, let me get in the no, door. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, your pals are coming in to help you out. Or save it. Okay. Hey, honey, I'm I home. have a bit of a drama, but I've decided. You've had we drama? A, we're going to make a pancake sandwich. A with pancake the food. sandwich? So we'll make two, thick, two pancakes. How's that? That's fine. Yeah? I turned it up, down for a bit because the veg was getting dead. You don't so. want to try and make a little tart? What do we have got time? Because yes, I didn't yeah. know what I was doing. I'll try, I'll Pastry try. Pastry doesn't make time in that time. Okay, shall I make pancakes? Just as a backup. You make pancakes, I'll make tart. I've made a little bit of a sponge and I thought I'll cut the sponge in yeah, and then we put just the fruit in and the cream on top. Brilliant. What can I do to help you? OK, we'll just do uh, some crepes. It's the flour. There's a big rescue operation going over there on that bench. Right now, we've got a pancake on the way. This should go into the crepe, right, as like a puree mash. <laughs> if you want. I don't know. You're the boss. Oh. Liz has got the fruit and mashed it into a pulp. That is the peach and the plum to go in the crepe. Taste it, just make sure it's OK. Let me find you a spoon. <laughs> taste it? It's, gonna, it's just going to taste the peach. What did you put in it? Of course it, it is. What taste. did you put in it? Uh, caster sugar. What's, what's this? Oh, ignore that. OK. <laughs> he hates me. <laughs> You've got ten minutes left to make your pie tart parcel pancake. Terrible. What I've done is you've done a chicken thing. It's not chicken. Do what you know what it? it is? No, Lab go it. on, don't tap. It's what? Love it. Oh, Thank God. God I didn't taste it. You would have had to bone it. Look. Oh, don't look, in fact. Carry on. Um, should I put some wine in? You put anything you want in. Did you give this a stir? Yes. That was one thing I could do. The potatoes were dead soft. There's no potatoes in there. Oh. You right, Tina? Yeah. Couple more minutes. Needs a little bit longer. It's a bit a, sticky in the middle. A little bit longer. Couple of minutes. How long have we got? Couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. I don't want to mess me sponge. Right. God knows what this is going to be like. Final 60 seconds. Do you 
we can use more fruit. Well, no, it's fine. That's it. Stop, please. Sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Tina and Louise have made a rabbit stew with carrots, shallots, mushrooms, bacon and red wine, together with a side of potatoes, broccoli, carrots and bread and butter. I'm really pleased the way you worked. You are both really calm. I mean, if it's panic going on, you seem to be hiding it very, very well. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much. Your carrots and your broccoli could both do with a little bit more cooking, but the star of the show, your rabbit stew, is delicious. Rich, lovely gravy, not too strong. You can taste the rabbit, sweet carrots, mushrooms, salty bacon, all reduced down, so it's just thick enough. Really, really tasty. Thank you. Did you put anything sweet in there? I did put a tiny, tiny bit of wine in it. Really lovely flavours you've got in there. You've got sweetness, you've got depth, you've got good seasoning, but you've got all that smokiness from that really good bacon. That's lovely. I, I could really dip my bread in that all, all day long. For their dessert, Tina's made a sponge cake and filled it with sliced plums and nectarines and topped it with whipped cream and berries. It tastes to me like a thick, good old-fashioned British sponge pudding. However, that fruit needed to be cooked somehow. Heat it up, get all that juice out of there, because that across the top of that sponge, I would have loved. Tina, I tell you what, we're almost there. We're almost there with that. The thought process of making a sponge pudding, opening it up, filling it with fruit and cream was good. A bit of finesse would be nice, but I don't think it's a bad job. Thank you very much. Thank We're you. We're learning, aren't we? I almost want to get drunk. <laughs> I'm that happy. <laughs> we, could, we, could just, we could just celebrate by cooking the fruit, couldn't we? <laughs> wow. Sid and Liz also chose to make a rabbit stew with parsnips, mushrooms, carrots, turnips, parsley and rosemary. You boiled your rabbit stew, the rabbit's dried out. Better off in an oven in a pot and just for it to oh, stew. Yeah. yeah. Lovely flavour of herbs. I'm picking up rosemary in there as well, which is really lovely. It's nicely seasoned. Love the veg you got in there. I've got parsnips, I've got turnips, I've got sweet carrots. I do think this sauce could do with thickening up. Yes, absolutely. It's a little wall tree. For dessert, Sid and Liz have made a crepe filled with nectarine and plum puree, accompanied by mascarpone cheese and berries. As rescue jobs go, I think it's pretty good. Is that cream cheese? I didn't I put know. that on, did you? It's cream, you told me to put a lot of cream. The cream, cream, yeah. It's going to taste OK. Know. The whole thing needs to be sweeter. Because what's happened is your lovely stone fruits, your plums and nectarines, have all boiled away and all the juice of the fruit has gone and disappeared. And what you're left with now is sort of a, a fruity pulp, which is a bit bland, served with unsweetened cream cheese, which is also a bit bland. Listen, not what either of you would have intended, but I do actually admire your endeavour and you never say die attitude. We certainly showed that we work very well under pressure. It doesn't matter what was, what was the end result, but we managed to sort of rustle something up, which was quite edible. It could have been worse. No Michelin stars. There's no Michelin stars yet. The good news is that nobody goes home at this stage of the competition, but this little task you've just done will hold you in good stead for what comes up next. We'll see you again very soon. See you later.
It's 8 a.m. and Sid, Liz, Louise and Tina are heading out of the capital to face their most daunting challenge yet. I'm hoping that we're a team together today, even with you, Sid. No, it's nice of you to say that. I just hope there's not too much pressure. That's all. I mean, quite seriously, I hope there aren't hundreds to feed. I want to have a little bit of a chill day today, mate. Welcome to this state-of-the-art training centre for Virgin Atlantic, one of Europe's biggest airlines. There are up to 600 permanent staff. You are preparing lunch for 120 of them. And you're staying in exactly the same teams as the last challenge. So there you go, wheels up at 1.30. I suggest you get going. You can exit there there or there. Thank you. Thank you. Today, the teams will be working under head chef Mark Taplin. So, as you can see, you've got a fine selection of ingredients to choose from. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to come up with your menu. We'll have a look at it, make sure it's all okay to serve, and then we'll go from there. Crack on. Each celebrity pair will have two and a half hours to cook two main courses and a dessert. The first task is to come up with a meat or fish option to feed 60. I reckon fish cakes would be alright because they're kind of healthy. Yeah, okay, let's do fish cake. It's different, isn't yeah. it? Let's do fish cake. Very reluctant to say anything because Sid has a habit of copying me, so it's kind of difficult. Excuse me. Alright, you two! <laughs> Pipe down. Seriously, out of my way. Well, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> they must also prepare a vegetarian course. Do a veggie curry. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Yeah, should we take these then? Okay. Just take the whole thing, seriously, because otherwise it's going to... And 60 portions of dessert. We need a dessert plan ASAP. Why don't we just do, like, a chocolate sponge? Yeah, OK. Right, what are we doing then? We're doing uh, fish cakes yep. served with uh, a tomato and onion relish, accompanied by a salad and something else on the side. Something else? Something, something else. Our array of treasures. OK. And then... We've not quite worked that one out yet. We we'll need to know that as soon as possible to make sure it goes with it, so have a quick think about that. OK. And then we will do a vegetable stir-fry. Uh, What's going through the stir-fry? Anything in particular? Any flavourings? Ginger. Or? It's going to yeah, be a gingery yeah, kind yeah, of base. Chinese, okay. uh, Asian style. OK. Yeah. Good. And your pudding? Yeah, we're not good at desserts. Um, <laughs> we're thinking okay. like a chocolate, like sort of cake, maybe, but we chocolate haven't had any flour. Maybe. Yeah, something. Okay, yeah, well, you can have some flour. Have bread? Do you have yeah. bread? Yeah, bread here, sliced bread. Yes. So we could maybe do a bread and butter pudding. It's going off on a tangent, but yeah. Right. He's the boss, I follow the instructions. Okay, well, okay. crack on. Bread and butter pudding okay. custard. Okay, let's go. Go. Oh, we need the custard. Did I pick up a custard? Right, do you want to talk to him about your, your oh, mushrooms? Yeah, I was going to stuff mushrooms for the veggie oh, option yep. with like a cheese and pepper no, uh, sauce, kind of melt Welsh rabbit yep. and stuff it into the mushrooms okay, and grill yep. it. Sounds Brilliant. good. And then we're making a cheesecake. Okay. Ooh. So, yeah, is that right? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Let's go. Right, let's go. For their main course, Tina and Louise have decided to cook pork chops served with fennel mash and a creamy mustard sauce. I think I've come up with uh, the best menu that I can today without a recipe. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, there's no recipe, there's no, you know, there's no looking in a book. It's like, oh my gosh, use your, I don't know what. You know, there are other things you could do, but it's what I'm going to do in the time, because you've got to just mass produce it, haven't you? Tina, how are you doing? Bye. Tina's taken charge of the dessert and is preparing the base for a vanilla cheesecake. Just want to get these done and then yeah. I'm laughing. I don't even want to think about the mushrooms yet, OK? Yeah, yeah, fine. Till I've done this. <laughs> Got to be easier ways. Surely they'd sell digestives broken. 
Can I have a sous chef or a helper? I'm doing my dessert and I need to just concentrate on that for 20 minutes to half an hour. Get it done, done and in the oven, but you've got to keep your eye on this base or it can mess it up, the whole thing's done. Destroyed. To make her cheesecake base, Tina is combining digestive crumbs with melted butter. Why are you frying them? I'm just melting them with butter. Yeah, but don't put on the heat, because you'll burn them. Don't fry biscuit crumbs. Melt that. Yeah. And when it's melted, put in the crumbs, and then anything else you like. OK. Thank you. Do you know he's absolutely right? In your hand, you're... No, you're no, I just it's need tough. to concentrate on this. So leave me be yeah, for 20 you. minutes. OK. And if you want to stop peeling the potatoes or whatever. Sid and Liz's first task is to peel 10 kilos of potatoes so they can make 60 haddock fish cakes. This is the most time-consuming component of everything. And there's a lot of potatoes that you're doing. So we're doing this bit together, and then we will split jobs then to hopefully use our time wisely. Guys, guys, I, can I borrow a peeler, please? Can I have a peeler? So there's only two in the kitchen. Can I have one? No. Can't you peel with a knife? That's what my mum used to do. Don't worry, I'll sort it out. Do I look worried? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. <laughs> so just wash them, Chef. You can in half an hour. Snooze, you lose. I'll give her it once it's blunt. <laughs> Sid and Liz. So we got smoked haddock fish cakes. Yep. Then you've got uh, a vegetable stir fry with noodles. Lots of ginger and soy sauce and chilli and lovely things like that. Yeah, not too not hot to though. Flavor, oh, why not hot? Because a lot of people don't like it. Who doesn't like hot food? I'm, probably, I'm sure there's someone out there. Do you like spicy food? I do. Do you like spicy food, Sid? I love spicy food. I like spicy food. Greg likes spicy food. 100% so far. <laughs> I suggest you make it spicy. Uh, dessert is bread and butter pudding. Yes. Fantastic. I'm really impressed. What's going with the bread and butter pudding? Custard. Uh, custard. Custard. Yeah. Fantastic. Lots of sugary, crispy top. There is now that you said it. Brilliant. <laughs> Fish cakes sound great. Are you guys happy about this? Oh, yes, ecstatic. Yes. Each year, around 4,000 cabin crew are put through their paces at this airline training base. A fully operational aircraft rig and cutting-edge technology simulate every aspect of life in the air, preparing those on board for any eventuality. They have to use slides to practice evacuation, open the doors of the aircraft, medical training. Twist off. We are in the service industry, so we have very high standards. Our normal caterer, who's here day to day, they produce very good food. So that's what our staff has got used to and will be coming to expect today. An hour of cooking time has gone, and Tina's cheesecake is ready for the fridge. I'm over the waist now, yeah. You got another try of this? No, I'll do 60 portions out of that, because I've worked it out like that. Have you? Only little squares with the raspberry compote, yeah. Show me how big a square's going to be. I'm gone a minute. Yeah, have you got a knife? And I'll show you how I did it. Pass me one of them funny ones, thank you. Like this, how I add it, right? Right, start in, if you start in the middle, then go in half again. OK. No, no, right in the middle, that's it, half again. Keep going in half, go that way now, down the middle, and then we'll see how many we get. Right, so there at the moment you've got 10, 12, 14, 16 portions. Give me 48 portions. Ah. Yeah. No, I need to do it again then. Yeah. I'll leave you with that. Where's the fridge? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'll have arms like Arnie. By the time I've finished doing this. While Tina makes another batch of cheesecake, Louise is juggling several things at once. 
So at the moment, I'm making the sauce, which is like a basic kind of roux. Um, at the same time, quickly making a compote at the same time as watching the potatoes. So I'm doing about three things. Oh, you've done whole ones. I would drain those off now, cut them down, yeah. and put them straight into the steamer. Uh, Tina, I've made a bit of an error with my potatoes. Went all industrial and just shoved them in, obviously big, which is okay. a bit silly. Don't worry about it. I'll so I'm going to take them out and I'm going to steam them, OK? So they'll to speed things up a bit. OK. All right. I might need help with this. OK, just let me get this finished, no. then I'm done. And then let me mash them. Oh, yeah. It's my piece de la resistance. Tina, thank goodness she's on my team because I really can get in a bit of a panic and I'm having a bit of a panic about the potatoes, but do you know what? She's got a really brilliant way. She said it's all going to be fine. I believe her. <sighs> I am going to look like Van Damme. Thank you, my love. Potatoes cooked. Yep, they're, they're nearly done. I, I've just, yep. Yeah. Speed him up a bit. With their potatoes prepped, Sid and Liz are making headway on their other dishes. Sid's decided to liven up his two trays of traditional bread and butter pudding with apricots and white chocolate buttons. While Liz prepares the veg for the stir fry. We've split up now so that we're on separate dishes just to get everything done, because actually a lot of our work is prep. These are the carrots for the vegetarian stir-fry. While I'm doing this, Sid's <laughs> drawn a short straw and is on the pudding. So I think you need a little bit more custard on top of that, yeah. so you obviously need to make a bit more up. It's we'll got to take be... take it up to Com about covered. Yeah, you, you want it Almost sort of covered. pressed down. And then once you've got it in there, it needs to soak for a little while, so right. it takes all the ingredients into the bread. Put a little bit of grease-proof on it and then just press it down so okay. it's all totally submerged. OK. And then you obviously cook it nice and gently. Cool. Yeah? Yep. You're worried about us, aren't you? You can say yes. Bread and butter pudding? Has it got apricots in it? Yes. You got a white chocolate sauce for it? Yes. Do you know why you've got a white chocolate sauce for it? Because it's nice, sweet, sugar. You know we're not good at desserts, so we just... <laughs> I think we're on top of most things. It's just the fish cakes, get them made up, weighed, because uh, it's important to have them all the same size. We're on top of it. Easy. Stop CPR, oxygen away, stand clear. The trainee cabin crew are on their final morning classes. And with a packed afternoon programme, it's vital lunch is served on time. This is where we're going to mix our fish cakes on the blue stuff. Okay. You haven't started your fish cakes? We're just about to get them on the go. You're going to make 50 of them? There's two of us. Yeah, but each one takes a minute. Even if you do 60, that's an hour. Right. Well, I would say quick. you better move really, 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 really fast. Okay, the mixing bowl, mixing really bowl. fast, really fast. Move, 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 move. Push, push, push. Mash. Okay. Right. Okay. Have you taken all the bones out? I thought it was bones. If it just flakes off, we'll find the bones, right? Yeah. This is going to take forever. No, it's not. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. We need to get going. I know. Really, really need to get going because that's. Yeah. They're not going to be ready. Across the kitchen, the red team's potatoes are cooked. Ooh. They're going to be ready for mashing in a minute. And Tina is on track with her vegetarian course. So I'm now making my Tina's Welsh rabbit. It's cheese on toast, really. But I kind of add peppers and garlic and make it a little bit more Mediterranean, I guess, do you know what I mean? So that's what I'm doing in the stuffed mushrooms, not on toast for the vegetarians. And it's really tasty and really filling. What are you serving with them? Nothing? No, why? You can't give a poor vegetarian two of them, can you? You've Sorry. got to be something a bit prettier than that. Got any salad? I'll make a salad. While Louise selects ingredients for a salad to complement the cheesy mushrooms, Tina gets to work on the mash. We've got a ricer if you want to use that. Is that easier? Yes. 
I like these ones. I like these little tomatoes. Yeah. I can cop those up. Good now and put them on a bit of rocket with a bit of squeeze of lemon and olive oil. Yeah. Spin the wheel. Hold the side and spin the wheel. Oh my gosh, look at this, this is brilliant. Right now I'm spinning the rocket in the most massive salad spinner that I've ever seen in my life and it's brilliant, I love it. I'm gonna start thinking about plating up as well, Tina, because we need to... Know, as soon as I've done these spots, yeah. I've got to bring me dessert. Oh yeah, mother sucks bananas at the bus stop. Oh, don't panic. It's just really heavy, isn't it? Oh. You don't need to go to the gym doing this, do you? Meanwhile, Sid's managed to get his bread and butter pudding on to bake. But with only 45 minutes to go, the fish cakes are still a long way off. OK. <laughs> yes. On time. <laughs> Gosh, what are they doing? They're doing all sorts of complicated processes, Tina. Ideally, you don't want it smashed up to pieces. You want a nice texture of fish inside it. Before you put the capers in, squeeze the juice out, because it's only going to make it wet. OK. We can't make 50 fish cakes up. We need a little bit of help. How long are they going to take in the oven, do you know? I want to pan fry them and then finish them off in the oven. How many you got? 50. You've got a pan fry 50. Yeah, I've got two sous chefs helping today. Hopefully we won't need them. But uh, if uh, they're up against it, then we will step in and help them, because they'll be baying for blood outside, if not. Give them, like, like, let's breathe for two seconds. Yeah. We need an order. So start pan frying them, so at least they start them. So as they come okay. out, well, some... so right. do you want me to pan fry them, or do you better at pan frying? I don't mind. Do you want... pan... Are you better at pan frying? I don't mind. Do you want to make them, or uh, pan frying? I can make them. You need oh, to start going because you've got to get, get these pan you've got to get your stir fry sorted. Right, I'll pan fry the fish cakes. Where do you want me to. What pan do you want you me to use? You or me? Uh, you... No, you make them as a 200 job. I'll make them, yeah? Yeah. Sid and Liz are really behind. It's all a little bit manic. We need, we need an extra pair of hands. They're still making fish cakes. Not cooking them, making them. Um, I, I just don't know where right, anything so is. It's what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Well, like, you know, everything's just no, all fine. over the place. Look, breeze, yeah. breeze, That's because right. you, you've set it up and you've left your stuff no, all over the like, place. No, but all like herbs and spices and things like that are breeze. over there. Tell us what okay. you want and we'll try and tell help you. Tell me what the plan you want. Um, Speak to me. Tell me what you want. I need to get these me. in order. And they're going to have to get themselves together. They're going to get a system in place. Give me a job. A job, right. Dip, dip, dip. Breadcrumbs, then we'll get we'll get them in the uh, fryer. Right, you got 15 minutes. I'm just finishing the pork chops under the grill. But we're trying to make them look nice, trying to crisp up the fat, trying to do various things. There's just not enough grill in my life. Right, should I take these out now? Cooked. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Got a bit of salad to go with them? Yeah. Tell you what, Louise and Tina look to me like they are on time. The mustard cream sauce is made for the pork, the mashed potato is made, the mushrooms are ready to go. Excuse me, excuse me. There's a cheesecake waiting to have the berry coulis over the top. They're ready. Time is running out for Sid and Liz. Uh, uh. Sid! They're starting to stick. Like, they're starting to oh, stick and fall apart. This ain't good for frying. It's perfect for frying. Well, what's I'm going just on? I'm frying it wrong. This is not hot. Enough, look, is it... Hold on, what you need to do is, when you're taking it out, yeah. you just give it, loosen it off a little bit. OK. And they still have 20 portions of stir fry to cook. I'm just going to get somebody to give you a hand for five minutes just to give you a little bit of a lift, or we're going to be late for lunch. Okay. You all right with that? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Kieran, start on the stir fries, please. Sure.
everyone's definitely looking forward to having their belly filled, basically. <laughs> so how many fish cakes have they got cooked so far? Most of them are cooked. You should see the queue out there, it's massive. I'm really hungry now. <laughs> we need to get it out, come on. Lunch is finally ready. Straight away, the staff have made a beeline for Louise and Tina's pork chops, which have been served with fennel, courgettes, mash, and a creamy mustard sauce. Not being funny, you've got room to grow, haven't you? So, you know, don't be shy. If I look you, like you, I'd have three pieces. This is the hardest I've ever worked in my whole life, literally. I went for the pork dish today. Um, I like the sauce. The sauce is very mustardy. The mashed potato is really nice. A bit overcooked, a bit hard. I think I've done the wrong choice. It was, it was nice. The sauce was really good. Some people thought the pork was starting to dry out, but I think ours is good. Mashed potato is smooth and buttery. Could do with a little bit of seasoning. Apart from that, I'll tell you what, that's good. That's quality. Fish cakes! Anyone want fish cakes? No, no, stay with the pork. <laughs> stay with the pork. You don't want that lumpy mash in that overcooked pork? Hi, look! <laughs> mash. There we go. It there just we stuck go. In the... You know it makes oh, sense. Sid and Liz's smoked haddock fish cakes are being served with a tomato salsa and spinach. Yeah, fish cake, please. Yeah. Are you a fish cake? I am a fish cake. Yeah. Fish cakes are very popular. I knew they would be, that's why I chose them. He almost bottled it, though. Almost bottled it. Almost changed his mind just, at the last just minute. Just making it up, Liz. That exceeded my expectations. That was really tasty. I wasn't quite expecting, you know, to be as good, but it was really nice, lovely. I loved the fact that there was a bed of spinach underneath. That was good. One thing, though, I did find a bone. I found a bone. But it was tasty otherwise. Credit where it's due, Sid has made some very good fish cakes. Smoked fish, which is a lovely flavour. It's crispy on the top. It's nice and soft with mashed potato in the middle. I like the salsa across the top. I mean, that's a good meal, isn't it? There you go. Enjoy. Enjoy. Hello, what can I do for you? Yes. With service in full swing, Tina's cheesy mushrooms, served with Louise's rocket and tomato salad and lemon oil dressing, are also a big hit. OK. The mushrooms are going really well. Of course, they're the best thing on the menu. Thank you. Not that I'm biased. No, no, no Louise's pork's device. Yes. Uh, I'll have the mushroom, please. Oh, well, there you go. Mm. The mushrooms are great. Really enjoyed them. The salad dressing was excellent. I thought the mushrooms were lovely. The salad was really nicely dressed. Lovely, really delicious. The mushroom is creamy, mildly cheesy, well seasoned. That's nice. Can't whinge about that. It's made with a bit of care and attention. I think this is the first mass catering challenge. You and I have actually gone, mmm, that's nice. Mmm, <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sorry, mushrooms are sold out. A long time ago, the mushrooms sold out. Can anyone hear some kind of noise in the background? They were the first thing to go. They were that popular, sorry. With Tina's mushrooms a sellout, the vegetarians are now left with one option. Would you like some coriander? No, thank you. Sid and Liz's stir fry has been made with carrots, peppers, coriander, chili, and ginger. Thank you very much. Come back for more if you want. There's plenty to go around for you noodles. Yes! See, they were just saving themselves. They're out there. Noodles? Yes. Three in a row, people. Three in a row. It's lacking seasoning, a bit more salt and pepper, just the basics in there. Um, apart from that, it is a little bit bland. I'd say it was a little bit dry, could have done with maybe a little bit more sauce, but generally, it was delicious. 
they're just a bit plain and a bit ordinary. I'm sad about that because I think they had plenty of opportunity to put lots and lots of flavour with those noodles. If the fish cake was first class, the noodles are most certainly economy. Sure are. Right, okay, so we've got to clear down now. Yes. And you've got 15, 20 minutes to get your dessert up and ready and to be served. Yes. Okay, so yeah? Yes, yes. Chef. Perfect. Thank you. Chef! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where you win the race at the end. Okay, see the end. Okay, visualize it. Oh, they're coming. Hello, would you like cheesecake? Yeah, yeah. Bread and butter? Yeah. Can I have the cheesecake, please? Certainly can. Certainly can. Having made an extra batch of vanilla cheesecake, Tina's offering hefty portions. Can I get the cheesecake, please? Would you like a big bit? Big as I'm allowed, yeah. I tell you what, you'll wish you'd never said that. You fill your boots, love. There you go. Hang on, I haven't finished. You need a bit of biscuit. Yeah, he's getting a big one. <laughs> yeah, you're a big strapping lad for you, man. Whoa, look at the size of their portion. You do know after you've had this cheesecake, you'll all need to lie down. The dessert I've gone for is the cheesecake with the raspberry coulis. It's got a nice crunchy base, I really like that. So they've obviously used like good digestives. And the coulis really tart and it's a nice contrast to the really nice creamy bit. It's nice, they've redeemed themselves. Get yourself a spoon, lad. You enjoy it, my love. Well done, well done. I think I've had a generous portion, so I can be pretty happy with what I've got here. It's got the buttery base, there's a slight saltiness to it, it's got the sourness of the cheese and the sweet sharpness of a raspberry compote across the top. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Can I have the bread and butter pudding? Of course you can have the bread and butter pudding. <laughs> Sid and Liz's bread and butter pudding is made with apricots and white chocolate buttons, served with custard. See if it's better than your noodles. <laughs> there you go, sir. Enjoy. It's a little bit disappointing because I couldn't taste the apricots in the custard, but the bread and butter part was very nice but I would have preferred the cheesecake, to be honest. Didn't have all the flavours I was expecting from it. I couldn't really taste the apricot and the cheesecake when I walked past it did look rather delicious. I wish I chose that. Cheesecake, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Last two bread and butter pudding, anyone want them? No, do not go to the bread no, and butter pudding. Stay where you are. Last Lincoln. two bread and butter <laughs> pudding, Stay where you are. No, you're wasting your time. Oh, there you go, look. <laughs> Lovely. Cheers. Thank you very much. Wrap! It needs a bit more custard. It's more bread pudding than bread and butter pudding. It needs more sugar. It needs a lot more sugar. And I said to them, lots and lots of sugar across the top, make it really crispy and lots and lots of sugar. It's a shame, really. There's little white chocolate buttons but they're so few and far between, you can hardly taste them. And if you really, really dissect it, you'll find yourself a little knob of apricot. That's it. There you go. And that's a relief. Well done, guys. Yeah. Don't be sore losers. We're not. <laughs> oh, oh, well done, it's been an experience. I forgot when you've got people in the kitchen that haven't got the experience, you sort of take your staff for granted a little bit. So I might thank them a little bit more often after, after today. A really big day for our four. We put them through our paces. Sid, I think, could probably do with communicating a little bit more. I agree. It didn't work as a team. And I don't blame Liz, funny enough. Cooking for a lot of people is hard work. There was a few hairy moments in between, but, you know, that's the life of a kitchen, I think. I felt that the stakes were raised today, and I like the pressure. I feel that if I'm given direction and given tasks, then I can execute them. Woo! 
However, the team of Louise and Tina was nothing short of superb, absolutely superb. I'm absolutely staggered. When they told me only a few hours ago that we we're going to do 100 whatever portions, I just wouldn't believe that that was possible. I'm glad I've had this experience to cook for such an enormous amount of people. And I've loved it. I am really proud of myself. From here on in, it's full throttle and take off. Because we're looking for our two semi finalists. After two days of competition, these four celebrities face one last challenge. Two of them will be going home. This is really down to the wire. I think it's pretty close. For the first time last night, I sat and thought, imagine if I got into the semi-final. I don't think there's any chance of that. I don't feel like I've learned enough yet so I'm uh, willing to stay around. I am nervous, obviously, because I'm just so aware of how much I've got to do in there today. I am genuinely excited about this round. You're not just cooking for me and John, you are also cooking for three very special guests, past finalists and winners of Celebrity MasterChef. Kimberly Wyatt, Ryan and Clark Neal, and Andy Peters. All three of those guys are incredible cooks. You are gonna have to be at your best, but you are good. Your job is to cook two extraordinary courses, and you have one hour and 15 minutes to do it in. Two semi-finals, place up for grabs. Let's cook. Seed so far in this competition hasn't used recipes at all. He seems to be a very instinctive cook. How are you doing, Sid? Good. I've got those uh, first sort of butterflies, anxiousness, a little bit nervy, but I'll, I'll be all right. I should settle down. And tell me, though, do you have a plan? Yes. And where is that plan? All up here. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> what I tend to do is sometimes forget very small details, but get away with it. So today I need to keep my cool and make sure that, you know, I'm using everything that what I've got in front of me. If you could worry about one thing, Sid, with these two dishes, what's it going to be, mate? Time. Now, see you later. <laughs> I have not practised these two dishes in the time frame, to be honest with you, because where I'm staying in a hotel, there's no kitchen. So, you know, the pressure's on. Sid's menu and part sounds very, very good. Breast of duck, crispy skin, nice and pink, served with a cream pepper sauce and gratin potato. But alongside on the bench, we've also got tomatoes, courgettes and red peppers and beans. I just find the whole thing sounding a little bit too confused. Sid's about to give us the second bread and butter pudding in as many days. It's going to have to be special, though. Soft, sweet brioche, lots and lots of custard. Some raisins in there served with some clotted cream. Could be truly delicious. So a bread and butter pudding again, Sid. Is this improvement on the last challenge's bread and butter pudding? Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope it's going to be better than yesterday's. You know, as you know, desserts aren't my strong point, so if I do go through, then I'm going to knuckle down and learn lots of desserts for you.
Louise appears to be unflappable in the kitchen as she does on a BBC morning couch. Everything she does has a little bit of style and a bit of finesse. How do you feel about the competition? I kind of am excited because you can now see the semi-final glimmering and it's just ahead and it's like being in a race, you can see the finish line. I want to go on, I want to get better. Um, and I think, unless things go desperately, terribly, terribly wrong today, I might be capable of doing it. The first dish, I'm going to do a seared tuna, so hopefully it'll be nice and raw in the middle uh, with a delicious soy and lemongrass sauce some rice as well on the side with the guacamole. I'm going to put some extra spice in there. And then for my pudding, I'm going to do mini molten chocolate cakes. A melting chocolate cake is a fondant in anybody's language. In fact, when I hear fondant, you want the organ music to start playing like it's some sort of horror film. Oh my gosh, this is a disaster! Tina has the building blocks of being a fantastic cook. She understands the basics. What Tina needs to do is just put a bit of polish on it, a little bit of sparkle. I'm hoping to show John and Greg that traditional cooking can have finesse, that I've upped my game with my presentation. I'd love to go through to the semi-final. I think I'd probably faint. I was going to say make sure there's a mattress by me, but it's not going to happen. You know what? I'm really genuinely made up I've got this far. I've taken it very seriously and, you know, I hope I've done what you've asked me to do. Yes, and more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far exceeded our expectations. I wouldn't write yourself off just yet. Not the sort of round you had in the last round. Tina's making us roast lamb dinner and a lemon drizzle cake. I love her honesty. She's got a lamb leg steak, and she's floured that, which she's going to roast. She's got crispy new potatoes and what she calls seasonal vegetables. The sauce going with the lamb is a red currant jus. It could be really, really lovely. Her dessert is a lemon drizzle cake with a crispy top, and she's serving that with clotted cream. I don't know how she makes a crispy top for a lemon drizzle cake. And right now, her lemon drizzle cake looks a little bit lopsided. It's a lopsided lemon drizzle cake with a crispy top. Cook it right, get the presentation right, because her list of ingredients and Tina's ideas, I think, are sound. I think Liz is the least experienced of our four cooks. But what she lacks in experience, she makes up for in energy and a fair bit of creativity. Your two courses today, Liz, what are they? I am doing a pork loin stuffed with apricots and figs and then wrapped in parma ham. And then for dessert, I'm trying the whole pastry and stewed fruit thing that I got so wrong a few challenges ago, just see if I've learned anything um, in the form of like an apple and pear and sultana pie. I think this sounds absolutely delicious. I mean, one word of caution, have you timed this? Yes, I've done it before. I am on a touch schedule, but I always buffer a bit extra in because quite often Things go wrong. <laughs> you cannot knock Liz's ambition. We've got a filler of pork filled with dried fruit of apricots and figs wrapped in ham. We've got mashed potatoes with leeks. And the whole thing is being served with a sauce made of peas. Pea purees the sauce? That's a bit strange. Maybe she'll pull off. Who knows? But a dessert sounds fantastic. Pears and apples and dried fruit wrapped in phyllo pastry with marzipan. Baked up in like a sort of Swiss rolly thing, like a strudel. 
she's going to combine puff pastry and fruit. That's where she tripped up and failed the invention relay. So she's gone back to revisit it to prove a point to us and to herself, and that's brilliant. There's been times where I've been like, oh my gosh, I'm so out of my depth. But then I've always managed to pummel through and find a way to get through, and it hasn't always worked out perfectly, but I've definitely found that I'm quite resilient and resourceful. <laughs> Former pussycat doll Kimberly Wyatt is the reigning celebrity MasterChef champion. When I did this challenge, I remember being super stressed. Holy grail, these things. This point in MasterChef was the one challenge I felt really proud of. I think this is a winner. Hurrah! I hope that a few of them feel the same. <laughs> TV presenter Rylan Clark Neal made it to last year's final. I remember at this stage, I was cooking for Les Dennis, Sophie Thompson and Aid Edmondson. I was so nervous because they're like veterans. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lovely playing, sir. Thank you very much. It's my first time being back as a judge, so I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm not going to take it lying down. TV presenter Andy Peters was a celebrity MasterChef finalist in 2008. To be fair, the celebrities have it a bit easier than my year. I am full of fear, but I'm determined not to show it. We had to cook for real critics. They've only got to cook for me, Ryan and Kimberly. Let's be honest, how hard can it be? This is your first time as critics on MasterChef. I've been here a few times. Some of it's going to be good, some of it's going to be bad. You need to be ready for anything. <gasps> okay. You ready? As ready as I can be. Let's do it, Kimba. Let's do it. You've got 10 minutes. Oh, God. So Louise's main is seared tuna with a spicy soy sauce guacamole served with lemon-infused rice. They pull in from a lot of different regions, but who knows, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. I quite like a lemon-infused rice. I think it'd be quite fresh, and I don't care how many countries it's had to go for. <laughs> You're sort of looking like a broken teapot. I feel like a broken teapot. Get your tuna over. Quick, 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 quick. That's what I was envisaging. That's good. Hey, look, you've got a smile back in your face. Yeah. Come on, tuna. Go, tuna. Oh, I'm just ruining it. Oh. It could still look nice, though. It all is not lost. No, not in any way is it lost. You've got three minutes left. Let's go, go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Very good afternoon, nice to see you. You too. Have a little light lunch. Thank you. For your main course today, ladies and gentlemen, you have a seared tuna steak with a soy and lemongrass spicy sauce and a spicy guacamole as well and rice on the side. Thank you. Bye-bye. The tuna is cooked lovely. I think it tastes nice. I can get that grilled taste of tuna. It's one of my favorites. I quite like the combination of the, the fish and the guacamole. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that, so that's nice. But I think the whole dish just has no punch at all. And the fact that this soy sauce that she said we were going to get, I can't detect it. The rice I was really looking forward to. And on the first bite, it just tasted incredibly bland. But. 10 out of 10 on presentation, love the look no. of it. Love it. Not 10. All right, eight. No, I, I, I It looks nice, Andy. No, surely a six. No, that's not a six. It looks nice. You think that's nice. an eight? I, yeah, I think it looks nice. It was simple, apart from the fact my rice was on the wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully timed and cooked tuna. Wonderful dressing. Love it with the slippery, naturally oily fat avocado. Wonder what on earth a big splodge of undercooked rice is doing on the side of the plate. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Dessert in 15? Yep. On it. Well done. So on it. Your fondant is not even in its mould yet. I know that. It's fine. It only needs 12 minutes. 
12 minutes. That means you've got three minutes to get in the mould. I need a spoon. A mini molten chocolate cake, which is obviously a chocolate fondant in disguise. We will not be rumbled. Ah! Less haste. In fact, more speed. Cook, cook, babies, cook. But why slow gin? Gin with chocolate is just a weird combination. Oh, aye, aye. Got a bit of slow gin and some cream. Yep, that's what you're having for your pudding today. How much longer do those fondants actually need in the oven? Um, about one minute. OK, you've Good. got a minute. Do you know what? I've done these chocolate cakes, you're not going to believe this, at home, loads. But yeah, that's what everyone says. They do a chocolate cake, it messes up, it knocks them out of the competition, and they all say, they were fine at home. Yours might be all right. They might be. I think they look great. Okay. Oh, crikey. Gently, 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 gently. Bye, Louise. Oh, my God. Oh, hello. Hi. Sorry for the slight delay on service. There you go, my lovely. You have mini molten chocolate cakes with a raspberry coulis on the side and homemade slow gin, which I made and brought specially for you here today. Louise, should they be runny on the inside? They should definitely be runny on the inside. OK? I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. This smells so good. I could smell it the second the door opened. The smell of deep chocolate makes me hope to God that when I cut into that, it just pours out. It's not oozing, but I've got to pay the goer dues. The taste of that chocolate is bang on. I was really hoping for some ooze, but I really, I, I got none. It's just cake, really. The raspberry coulis is lovely, and I love the chocolate and the raspberry together. That was fantastic. And this I haven't even tasted. I'm a bit nervous, but oh, here it goes. Ah, that's, it's quite nice. I think it's almost the stage of becoming more like a muffin texture, but I like the clotted cream and I like the sherbetty raspberry on the side. But the slow gin makes the dessert for me. Not too sweet, good flavour of cocoa. Nothing wrong with that, son. Nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, dearie me. I know lots of things went well, but not everything. Sid, I'm looking forward to this. Margaret of duck, served with potato gratin, and roasted seasonal vegetables and pepper sauce. What's a Margaret? Is it Margaret? Margaret? Margaret. <laughs> and pepper sauce? You know, you've got to get it right. If it's too much, it really hits your nose. Otherwise, it really adds to all the flavour. I thought you were going to have a creamy pepper sauce, I thought you said. Well, it's my take on a pepper sauce. It's red. That's the red wine. So, a red wine pepper creamy sauce. A red wine dew pepper sauce a la Sid. <laughs> Looks good, Sid. A bit of presentation as well, Sid. You normally just chuck it on the plate I'm from a couple trying. of feet away. Brilliant, you can go, thank you. Back for dessert, yeah? Ricky! Where are you? Hello. OK, so we've got uh, magre, which is a breast of duck, pan-fried and some seasonal roasted veg with a potato gratin and a red wine juice or pepper sauce. Thanks, Sid. Cool. Cool. Cheers. I love it. I think the flavours in this dish are fantastic. The potatoes 
absolutely perfect. Just the right amount of cheese on the top, crisping it up. And his purple sauce, which is the most bizarre looking sauce, tastes really nice with the duck. I absolutely love it. Do you know what I say? Yep. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me that good food dance. That's when you know. That's when you know. That's when you know. Oh. Okay. Mm. Oh. It's a duck. And it's good. It's good. Mm. Uh, mm. At least Sid is trying with presentation. And I tell you what, when he cooks things right, he gets them absolutely right. That duck and open wires are fantastic. Mmm. Dessert? Dessert, yeah. You happy with everything? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually. 15 minutes till pudge, yeah? 15 minutes, no problemo. Bread and butter pudding made with posh bread. Served with clotted cream. He's got nowhere to hide. It's got to be crispy on top, juicy on the inside. And clotted cream, you buy it and you put it on the side. Creme anglaise, that would have showed a bit more skill. All right, Andy Piers. Happy Sid? Yeah. You stuck plenty of cinnamon in there? Yeah. Did you forget to put the sugar on yesterday's bread and butter pudding? I did, yeah. I mean, have, you I... put, have you put sugar on that? Yeah, you can see, yeah. That's all right. There we go, rustic. Rustic quenelle. Rustic quenelle. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Use the use sieve. The, use the sieve, use the sieve. Why? Use the sieve, Owen. I'm done. Happy? Happy. On time, let's go. Thank you. OK, so you've got a brioche butter pudding with raisins and currants served with clotted cream. Enjoy. Smells really nice. Oh, it smells amazing. Ash Nolte. <laughs> I can just taste the sugar and vanilla and I love this. I love it. By using brioche, he has created a really light bread and butter pudding. He has infused the flavours fantastically. Honestly, it's just genius. He's done, I'm so proud of him. Like, I know him, but I'm just proud of him anyway. If I was to explain Britain in a dish to my American friends and family, this would be the one. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice, big, warm, comforting, sweet, cosy mess, isn't it? And that's what we love about it. <sighs> Regardless of the result, I feel that, you know, I couldn't have tried any more. I gave it my best. That's all I could do. Now, looking at everyone's menus, this, personally, for me, is the one that I think I'll, I could really enjoy to eat. It seems the most normal. Juicy lamb steaks, we'll be the judge of that, with crispy new potatoes and seasonal veg with a red currant jus. Yes. She's got to get those potatoes crispy. She's got to get that lamb juicy, because that's what she's promised us on the menu. You've got three and a half minutes to go. OK. You cook the beans like I cook spaghetti. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I always do them like that. Oh, you're making me nervous. You two stood there. I was all right. We've got to stand here. It's our job. Oh, yeah. Is that how you do them at home? Yeah. I'm coming round. I'm trying to do it the way you two would, but I can't. How would we do it? Posh. Do you think so? Yeah. I don't, we're not posh. We're both working class blokes. I know, well, you, you look posh. What's the dessert going with it? It's um, a red currant chip. I've done roasted lamb in thyme and rosemary with crispy new roasted potatoes and a red currant dew with seasonal veg. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> what is it? I've no idea. 
Whatever it is, it's not seasoned. That lamb is so cooked to death. It's really chewy and there's not a lot of flavor in there. You know, sometimes when you cook with a lot of fat, that's going to add the flavor, but it's been cooked to death. It is really chewy. Even with these, it's an effort. I mean, everything is overcooked. The mange too, I mean, it's died, been resurrected and died again. This, I'm a bit gutted because it's not a jus, it's like a raspberry coulis. Mm -hmm. I feel like this would work better with a lemon drizzle cake when that comes. I love those potatoes with the flavour of rosemary, I really do. I think they're really well cooked. I don't really like very much else on there. These beans are really quite bizarre because you put them in a pot as you would spaghetti, so they sat half out and half in the water. So one end is cooked, and the other end is raw. You've got 15 minutes to put. OK. Dessert is Tina's Crunchy Lemon Drizzle Cake and Cream. This could be the dish of the day if it's done to yeah. perfection. I think the fact she's called it Tina's Crunchy Lemon Drizzle Cake, I hope it's something that she's cooked for years and years and years and everybody's a fan and they're like, you must cook that on MasterChef, you must cook that on MasterChef. This is worse than opening up the National, I swear to God. Are you done, Tina? Yes. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm going to take that bit. <laughs> this is just good old fashioned traditional lemon drizzle cake with fresh cream. Thanks. Tim. Enjoy. Come on, Tina. She should be proud of her sponge making skills. They are exceptional. This cake is so light. It's sadly also light on flavour. You know, I love a bit of cake with my cream, but the cream is almost overpowering that lemon taste. So I'm really having to search for it. I would buy this in a shop, in like a supermarket, warm it up yeah. and eat it. Oh, I feel so bad. But it's a very nice sponge, very competent sponge. Good flavour of lemon running throughout perhaps could be sweeter. We were promised a crunchy top and there ain't no crunchy top. It went brilliantly in the kitchen today. My lamb was perfect, my vegetables were, and, and my sauce was beautiful, and my lemon drizzle cake was perfect. So I'm ecstatic, it couldn't have gone better. Liz is doing pork tenderloin stuffed with apricots, figs and pine nuts wrapped in parma ham. Bit random. Right, panic not. Is that too pink? It's perfect. That looks good. Let's go. Hi. Hi. So your main course is a pork loin wrapped in parma ham, stuffed with some apricot fig and pine nuts, with a pea puree and a mashed potato with some texture from some leeks. If you could eat it slowly, that would be great, because my dessert is it's going to be late. <laughs> but you've already had three meals, right? So. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy. My pork is cooked to perfection. I think it's really tasty. The apricots and the figs is lovely with the pork. I love the parma ham wrapped in it. I think it's fantastic. It's all a bit soft and the parma ham hasn't gone crispy, so it's still a bit limp. So therefore you don't even get any crunch. 
Not, not my favourite. I, I don't hate it, but it's not my favourite. I don't think the P pure rate needs to be there. And the mash, not one lump in there, apart from the ones that are supposed to be there, which are the legs. And you are the potato expert. Mm. And I love a potato. <laughs> I, I can do miracles with a potato, let me tell you. <laughs> What I'm really impressed about is the pork is moist. The whole thing could do with a bit more seasoning, and the seasoning would come from a lovely, rich sauce. I warned them it's going to be late dessert, but you have to officially warn them. Do you give them a time? Did you officially warn them? Well, I don't know if I was official They enough. might have a train to catch. OK, well, then they'll have to... Right, Liz, come and talk to me. I've got time. Yes, you have. Tell me what the process is. I literally just roll out the pastry, yeah. put the marzipan on, and then right. whack it, egg yolk it and whack it in the oven and okay, fine. pray. Apple, pear and sultana pudding. No idea. Yeah. Don't know what that means. Yeah. That could be apples, pears and sultanas in a bowl. Having a lovely time. You've got three minutes left. OK. Where is she? We've been waiting quite a while. Are we ready to go now, Liz? You've got to move now. Here we are. There you go. Go on, off you go. That's 15 minutes late, John. Any later and she'd have been serving a breakfast. Ooh. One self. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, team. Thank you. But there you go. Oh. So for your dessert, you have an apple, pear, sultana and cinnamon pudding with a cream that's got a hint of vanilla in it. So again, sorry that you had to wait. Thank you, enjoy. Thanks, Thank Good you. Luck. For some reason, in my head, I had this idea that it was going to be some sort of deconstructed, like, apple and a pear and, you know, like a sort of just, like, spread out and, like, like living life. Mm. And then I've just got a strudel. <laughs> the top of the pastry is fantastic. It's crisp, it's crunchy, the bottom is quite soggy. And the marzipan almondy taste for me is just too overpowering. The apples and pears taste quite nice. Cooked lovely. They've still got a nice tartness to them, but the softness and the sugariness of it being cooked, I think those are done well. It's quite liquidy, maybe a little bit too liquidy. Because of that, the pastry on the bottom's not as well cooked as it is on the top. That is lovely. Absolutely lovely. Her timing is way out, though. I enjoyed the whole process from start to finish. I just don't like the fact that I was late, but I can't do anything about it now. You and I had high expectations of these four, and I think they did pretty well. There was a few things were a bit muddled, but their delivery was good. Some good cooking, I thought, today. We've heard the comments back from the guests. They loved Sid's cooking. All right, you can't deny that. We liked it, so Sid's in. They were very disappointed, as were we, over Tina. Tina relied on good old classic home cooking and her food was tasty, but it could have done with a bit more polish. Everything went really well for me. I'm really pleased. I have done my best. If it's not enough, c'est la vie. Liz was ambitious from the off, and I say I think a little bit over-ambitious. Al Guests were divided by the dessert. But of course, being 15 minutes late is a bit of a problem. I'd hoped to have given myself a chance, but I don't know how much the time penalty will uh, affect me. It's the first time we witnessed Louise in a bit of a flap. 
the pressure got to her and it told. She started to make mistakes, which we've never seen before. However, she gave us tuna cooked really well that you and I enjoyed and so did the guests. I've learned so much and I've got ideas that I want to work on and get better at, so I would absolutely love to stay and not have tripped myself over. We've watched their competition, the ups and downs of MasterChef. Who's had more downs and ups and who's had more ups and downs? We only have two semi-final places to give. And we've made our decision. Our first Celebrity MasterChef semi-finalist is Sid. Well done. Well done. Well done. Good job, Sid. Our second semi-finalist is Louise. I've gained a lot of confidence and I've just had an absolute ball. And I'm definitely going away a stronger chef than when I arrived. I'm so proud of what I've done. I've had a great time and I wouldn't do it any differently. Congratulations, you two. Wow. MasterChef semi-finalist. I mean, when I tell my friends and my family, they will not believe that this was actually possible. Congratulations. <laughs> as much as I hate to say it. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm elated that I'm in the semi-finals. You know, I can't tell you. Goosebumps. I'll definitely have a few tonight, that's for sure. See you in the semi-finals. Semi Cannot wait. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs>